All right, everyone. So for today, uh, the fourth day of class, what we're going to do is talk about the other big blogging platform. Now, uh, blogging has been around for a while in different incarnations. Uh, an earlier incarnation of blogging, you might remember, was LiveJournal.com. That one's pretty passe nowadays. It, it might have been popular back in the day, like seven years ago or so. Not really that well known. Eventually, others came out. There was, of course, also uh, Blogger.com as well as Blogspot. Both of those are Google properties. They're still around, but uh, again, they're not as as popular anymore because they are still sort of in the style of the web 1.0 world. Uh, we're in a web 2.0 world at the moment with which is one way to define it is that websites nowadays are much more interactive. So web 2.0 websites are more interactive. Think about Facebook. If you use Facebook you interact with your friends and family, maybe you play games, you share photos, you add comments. Think of other sites you might visit. Maybe like, I like to visit um, this tech site where they post the latest videos and uh, rumors or whatever about technology and people can then interact, reply, tweet about it. That's a Web 2.0 site. The older Web 1.0 sites then would be defined as those sites that don't have that form of interaction. And so something older like LiveJournal, Blogspot and such fit a little bit more in that way. The other big platform nowadays of course for blogging is WordPress. That's what we spent two whole days on, two and a half days on, and um, it's a lifelong learning thing. The other big platform that we'll talk about then today, as much as we can, is Tumblr. As a matter of fact, when I type WordPress right now, didn't it suggest to me... Yeah, right there, WordPress. Oh, no, I thought it said WordPress versus Tumblr. But it's WordPress.com versus WordPress.org, which we should know what that answer is. Tumblr.com. T-U-M-B-L-R. Yet again, another mark of a Web 2.0 site is that they forget a vowel here and there. So Tumblr.com, Flickr.com, um, and so forth. So we're going to be looking at Tumblr.com today. And I, we are pretty much following the, the syllabus's uh, calendar that I set forth on day one. If you haven't looked at it in a while, we've been following along with it, basically. So on the fourth day, we're going to be talking about uh, Tumblr, which I would call the short-form blog or maybe even the short attention span blog. Uh, as opposed to WordPress would be the long form blog or maybe the long attention span blog. WordPress, as we talked about, 100 words, 300 words, you know, more breadth, more depth to your WordPress content, which you can have pictures, you can have text, you can have video. Um, you can just have longer content, longer attention span. Uh, Tumblr is almost a hybrid of a blog platform and a social network like Twitter or Facebook where you post short form content stuff that is published and then uh, people say what's next and so new stuff comes out much more often on a Tumblr blog than on a uh, WordPress blog perhaps so we're gonna look at tumblr.com and remember on the first day and it's still in the network folder you can look at some of those examples of Tumblr blogs, Tum blogs, such as what was that nice one? Um, uh, awesome people hanging out together. Tumblr com, where it had celebrities hanging out with each other and such. So a Tumblr can be about anything, but as as we saw the examples on the first day, they're really about you know short attention span items. You can quickly share text or photo, links, and all of that. Uh, in a sense, it might be reminiscent of Pinterest because, again, Tumblr is sort of like halfway between a, a, a website or a blog and a social network. So we're going to create a Tumblr account together in just a moment and start using it. Uh, and the point of this is to get an overview. In one day, we're not going to really become pros at Tumblr, but we'll learn as much as we can about the importance of it. And then you can decide, well, I'll stick with WordPress. Or you may decide, actually, I think Tumblr might work better for my audience. Or you might not know yet, and you could try both at once and then figure out eventually, okay, Tumblr's the way to go. WordPress is the way to go. There's no wrong answer. The point, though, is if you only have a, a basic website, 
that's the minimal that you have to do nowadays. You have to have blogging, you have to have social media to be found on search because there's so many competitors out there. You need to create your presence online and blogging is one way to do that. So at the very top if you just if you go to Tumblr if you go to Tumblr like me, you might get a different picture in the background than me. I get this uh, mouse enjoying a cupcake. You might get something else. Oh, it's a ferret, actually. At the bottom right corner, it tells me, posted by Plato Ferret. So platoferret.tumblr.com. Probably all about ferrets. Yep, all about uh, ferrets. People can write, can create a blog about anything. For the purposes of, of yourself, you're probably going to uh, continue to use WordPress or create a Tumblr blog again to build awareness for your for your website, for your brand, to create content that then the search engines can find. And when people search for different things related to you, they have an easier time finding you. So the first thing we need to do is create an account and. Look at, we'll look at all the nuances about that. So let's go to tumblr.com. It'll ask you for an email, a password, and a username. This email should be an email that already exists of yours because then it's going to ask you, please confirm your email. So type in your Gmail or your Hotmail or whatever you have. Write a password. And then on username, the, the, the little, uh, the confusing thing about Tumblr is that you can create a Tumblr account and then create multiple Tumblogs. Technically, you can also do that in WordPress. You create a WordPress account and then you can create many WordPress blogs. We just focused on one. But Tumblr is the same. You can create one account on Tumblr with your email and login info and then create multiple Tumblr accounts for multiple subjects. Maybe one Tumblr is all about my cat, and another one is all about my business, and another one is more specifically about the charity, the charitable work of my business. You can do that if you'd like. We're going to focus on one Tumblr blog attached to our one account. When I typed a, an email and password and I went over to username, it suggested in my case, Shady Collector Kitty. That's going to create a username for me and a Tumblr blog. So right here it's offering to give me, if I sign up here, uh, shadycollectorkitty.tumblr.com. I might not want that. And here's other suggestions. Perfect Collection Kingdom, Unabashedly Kitty Milkshake, and Starbucks Bouquet Suit. Well, probably what you want to write here is the name of your, of your company or whatever you're, you want your blog to be. So again, I'm going to say I'm Victor's Bakery. So I'm going to type here, Victor's Bakery. The capitalization does not matter, but capitalization in this case is, is nice for readability. If you've got capital letters and such, because you cannot have spaces there, with capitalization, the words can make sense to people. Or else you'll see a, bring un a big unbroken names such as awesome people hanging out together .com. if you put capital letters here and there it's more readable so i'm going to try this username of my account this is the account that i want the website that i want click sign up oops somebody already took victor's bakery but it's suggesting awesome victor's bakery okay close enough it's also suggesting OMG Victor's Bakery Fan, maybe, or Go Victor's Bakery. Maybe that one. It's easier to spell. It's easier to propagate. So hopefully the username of a website, a Tumblr blog that you'd like, is not taken. If it is, you might have to take a moment or two to figure out a name that's not taken. And once you do, click Sign Up. To try to prevent spam, it's gonna—I believe it's gonna ask you then your your 
your birthday or this is either it's either to prevent spam or it's because I believe you need to be at least 13 years old to use uh, Tumblr so right there that you are at least 13 years old I have read the read the rules and such you can read those if you'd like that's the thing that everyone agrees to but no one reads Oh, please enter your age as a number only. Okay. You might get another sort of little thing to prevent spam. I'm not a robot. Nope, so I'll click that. Yours might say something else. So there's a couple of questions it asked to me, then it wanted to verify me, and then it, it got me to this screen here. Raise your hand if you see some sort of screen like mine, which is a bunch of um, suggestions. Does anyone see a screen of suggestions? Okay, so this is again like a social network. If you've got a Twitter account, if you just set up a Twitter account and you don't have any friends or followers there, Twitter is going to seem pretty boring because you're not going to see anything. You might have Facebook, you might use Facebook and your friends and family are probably posting stuff and it looks pretty active and then you go over to Pinterest and no one pays attention to you, you think okay Pinterest is a failure back to Facebook but Pinterest is one of the top social networks you want to be on it's just that perhaps you're not using Pinterest the right way Tumblr is the same sort of way if you don't have any connections on Tumblr it might not feel as useful as it could and this is Again, as I've said, Tumblr is part blogging platform, part social network. And so here it's suggesting, why not follow five blogs? Why not follow five accounts on Tumblr? If you follow those five accounts, what the point of this is that you will see content showing up on your home screen, kind of like Facebook, kind of like Twitter. The point of that for us is, again, Twitter or Tumblr is different than 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 WordPress. Uh, Tumblr um, is very social, and Tumblr um, is really much more about connections with other blogs. Because I'm going to share something on Tumblr, and I want my followers to see it and reshare it or comment on it and, and so forth. That's how I build a name on Tumblr. I have followers, connections, and so forth. So that's why, that's why this is asking you why not follow some accounts. As you scroll down here, maybe you'll see accounts related to what you your company is about. If you do, great, click a follow. If you, um, if you don't see anything related, you can click at the top uh, a, uh, a keyword. I'm going to type in bakeries. Let's see what happens. Bakeries. PF bakeries, cakes and bakeries, across the bakeries, bookshelves and bakeries. OK, I'm going to choose a few of those. I would suggest to, to follow the ones that seem to have a more complete profile. Complete means? They have an icon here instead of generic little Tumblr icons. They have their, they have an icon. Even better also then is they have a little background picture here instead of the generic one as well. And they also have a biography here. So I'm looking at May Waldfee. For some reason she appeared here under bakeries, but perhaps I won't really follow that one because I don't get enough of a of a of a sense of what they're about. But I'm seeing PF Bakeries is pretty complete. If you hover over, you also see their latest posts. I'm going to select that one. Across the Bakeries. Dedicated Fangirl Meets Cake. OK. You can always unfollow later. But for the moment, I'm going to select five accounts. Let me try another keyword. Cookies. Addicted to cakes. Okay. Cuckoo for cookies. Sounds good. What's this one? Watch me do stuff. 
cheapish sweets, cheapest sweets. So I'm going to select a few. It says five or more, but I guess I'm going to fill up these little boxes down here. That's six. So I'm going to select a few accounts. Let's see, small business. The small business success block. Okay. The mompreneur minute. All of them sound good, so I'll follow another one. And then I'll select, and uh, down at the bottom right, see it. The point of what we're doing here, which will become more evident later, is that uh, on WordPress, as I've said, once a month, 100 words is your first goal. Then eventually, you're going to want to do once a month, maybe 200 words. And then maybe eventually, once every two weeks, 100 words. Right? You're going to try to put content out on a regular basis. If you're going to post something once a month on Tumblr, you're not going to succeed. Really, for Tumblr, you're going to post something once a week at the most. Um, people, again, short attention spans on Tumblr. So they follow lots of blogs. Yours is just one of them. If you're not posting enough stuff to stay in people's minds, if you're waiting be weeks between posting on Tumblr, you're not going to be on people's minds. You're not going to be using Tumblr the best you could. So once a day is not unheard of to post on Tumblr. You think, how am I going to make stuff up every day? Well, you don't need to post your stuff all the time every day. You have these connections that you're forging with other like-minded blogs, and you have, we'll see that there's a button that will say share or reblog. You can share other people's stuff on your blog. That serves a variety of purposes, which I'll talk about a little later. But think of this ratio, 80-20, 80% to 20%. 80% your original stuff, 20% other people's stuff. So obviously the vast majority is your own original stuff as much as you can, and then 20% other people's stuff. That way will help you not get burnt out. We'll have then a variety of content on Tumblr. Keep your followers interested. You're going to be sharing other people's uh, uh, content. You might have followed 10 blogs, but they might not have followed you back. As you are you know, benevolent and sharing other people's stuff, they get a notification and then that could cause them to eventually follow you. Then they would share your stuff. So that's one of the purposes for following other blogs. What is What are other people sharing? I'll share some of their stuff once in a while. Also, we can see what are other people sharing that gives me an idea. I'll do something in my own vein. I'm going to click See It. Hopefully by the first break, by the end of the first break, at the top mine says, one quick thing, we need to verify your email, be so click the link. Before the end of the next break, hopefully you can go over to your email and click the verify button to give you the full features of Tumblr. I'm going to skip that for the moment. But I'm going to now talk about getting acclimated with what, what, do we, what do we have here. So did everyone manage to get to a screen that was similar to mine with some content now? Anyone need a little help? Okay, I'm scrolling down a little bit. I see some very, very pink cookies. Um, scrolling down, I get a pop-up that says, want to see this blog on your blog? Reblog it. It'll go on your blog so your followers can see. You can add your own text to it, too, if you like. So we're going to see these little pop-ups that appear here and there, especially as a new Tumblr user. And what this is saying is, um, for better or for worse, but really I think for better, Tumblr is very, 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 very sherry. They like to share a lot. You post something on Tumblr, don't be surprised if it gets shared ten times and it goes all over the place to people you never thought it would get to. That's what we want. We want our stuff to get shared. We want our stuff to get found by other people. Um, so it makes it easy that just about everything on Tumblr, unless you turn it off, is going to have a button to share. 
And for your business, you probably want to always leave that on. You want your stuff to be easily shareable to help build an audience. We want the people that, maybe the seven people that currently follow me, I want them to also be my cheerleaders and have them share my stuff to their 40 people. And then if that goes to some of their 40 people, some of those might share to their 80 people. And now suddenly my stuff is going out to 200 people instead of just the seven that I think I'm connected to. So yes, that's very rad. I click that and go on. So you might get pop-ups here and there that appear. When they come up on mine, I'll explain them. Here's another one. Hey, you have a blog. You can change the title, colors, header, image, all that under Edit Appearance. We'll get to that in a moment. But our blog uh, is very, very basic. Mine looks like a little triangle guy. You might have something else. We're going to need to talk about editing that because people are going to be more apt to follow you if you don't look like just another generic, newly created Tumblr blog like the spammers. That's fine. I'll just click elsewhere. So I follow, here's another one, keep exploring, follow this compass into the, wilder, into the wider world of Tumblr. Stuff that we like, stuff that we think you'll like, stuff that'll help you get your bearings here. I'll never be bored again, so just skip that for the moment. That again is about uh, the social aspect of things. We're going to look at all of these screens in a moment. Uh, look for specific something, here's a field for you to type what specific thing, anything you can think of. Right, that's fine. I've got a, it's kind of hard to see, I didn't really notice it. I don't know if you did. Search Tumblr. It's right at the top there. We'll be able to search different topics in Tumblr. It's very useful. We'll, we'll see it, of course. Here's another one. Enough with the pop-ups, but here, make some posts. There are seven post types that should cover it. We'll be posting some of those in a moment. Yes. But I followed Addicted to Cake, so I get a pop-up. I mean, I get a, a post about that. I followed another one over here, there's another post, and here's another pop-up. See something you like? Click the heart. The person who posted it will get a note that you like their stuff. Well, eventually we're going to want that too. We're going to post stuff, we're going to want likes, we're going to want comments, reblogs, etc. You might notice maybe hashtags. Uh, hashtags are keywords that define a post or tags in WordPress. So we've got hashtags in Tumblr, tags in WordPress, hashtags in Twitter, and, and, and so forth. So we'll talk about that. Those are useful because then this will link your post with the larger zeitgeist of concepts and then help people find your stuff. So what we're looking at is currently the, the dashboard, this little house right here. Try this address up here, tumblr.com slash dashboard. Okay. So we have a Tumblr account, but it's not really fully set up. It's still very generic. One of the things that we should do early on, then, is to set up our profile, our, our Tumblr blog, our Tumblog, to make it a little more friendly, more complete, to entice people to follow us. So, here on the dashboard, you should see this little account icon, this little generic person. If you click on that, we've got some items of the account, like how many I am following, settings, and so forth. This currently lists my blogs. I have one blog, Go Victor's Bakery. And again, we can have more than one blog. But at the moment, I want to edit some things about it. So click up here, Edit Appearance. So there is a little bit of branding we can do. 
We can edit this background picture. We can edit this logo. You might not have any of those handy at the moment, but you do if you're going to use Tumblr effectively. You want to edit those. This is the username, which is also your address. So govictorsbakery.tumblr.com is my Tumblr address for this account. That's your username. If you want something else, like the Victor's Bakery, you have a little pencil there to edit. Uh, so this is again very similar to WordPress.com in that the um, the free account gives you whatever address is available dot wordpress.com we have a very similar thing for tumblr whatever address dot tumblr dot com if you want to change that you can I'm gonna leave that for the moment website theme we'll get back to that similar to wordpress in that it has themes that you can switch to and your content stays the same just the theme changes we have a few items here, which I'll explain. So we've got replies. Allow replies from people you follow. Allow replies, replies from people who have been following you for more than a week, more than two weeks. Okay, so this again is the interactivity aspect of things, the social media aspect. All of these in my case are off at the moment. If I were to select one, now what this is saying, this, was, this is going to allow people to post replies on your content of the people that you follow. So both of these are off, which means at the moment, in a sense, no one can post any replies to the content that you publish. They can see it, they can favorite it, they can reblog it and such, but they can't comment on it. If you say, if you select the first one, if you follow a particular account, then they have the ability to comment on your posts. If you don't want to limit yourself to that because you might not want to follow a thousand blogs just so that you can get some replies, you also have here allow replies from people who have been following you for more than two weeks. So if I turn that one on, it's going to let people comment on my stuff. Unfortunately, there is no moderation system like on WordPress. Remember, on WordPress, we can turn it on so that if someone comments, I get an email. I can preview it and then I can press approve or deny. Uh, Tumblr doesn't have that. The closest that they have is someone has to follow you for two weeks before they can comment. And maybe someone wanted to write something really mean on your post and then they cannot do that until they follow you. And then they have to wait two weeks, like to cool down maybe. And then in two weeks they'll forget to write something mean and they won't. So it's not the best commenting system, but it's more like a social network in that anyone can write anything. You just have to then address it or deal with it or ignore it or whatever. For a business, I would recommend the second option, but that's up to you because maybe you, you don't want that uh, burden or, or, or that capability of people commenting on your stuff. You just want to share stuff but oftentimes, if we're using a blog, we want people to interact with us, so we want comments. Mm -hmm. If people share stuff and comment and stuff, and, and, and then I'm doing a Google search for a, you know, a specific obscure word, will it pick up the word in their comments? In other mm. words, let's say I some. Um, Yes, yes, I, that's a good point. It is a possibility, but there's just so much comment out there, content out there, but the actual content that you post is the one that has the most preference. Okay. So it could show up, but in a sense, what happens on Tumblr sort of exists more on Tumblr than in the outside world of it. So your those comments could show up, yeah, on Google. I, I, in, in the older forums, it's like you can do that. It's like yeah. I, I can search for something obscure and, I, and type in the, and deliberately type in the word forum with it and get and see the stuff that people wrote based on what people wrote in the forum. Like, yeah, this would be similar. Way, right? 
this would be similar to a degree, but it is a newer generation of, of blogs. Question in the back? Can you delete Yeah, you have control to edit there, uh, to edit the content that you that's posted, so that's one way to do it. Uh, although sometimes it just happens so quickly that it gets away from you, uh, not in a negative way, and I don't think most of us are really going to run into negativity. It's just, you know, those that are the bigger names are the ones that might be more prone to that, you know, celebrities, they have their, their haters and their likers. If you're a big corporation, that might happen also, but I think for most of us, we probably won't run into this issue. And we can always turn this on and off as necessary. So again, here's another kind of aspect of it as a social network. This is off by default as well. Let people ask questions. Send your audience to slash ask to ask your questions. What that means is, if I turn that on, I'm going to have a brand new address that says govictorsbakery.com slash ask. I'm going to turn that on just to show you. You don't have to turn this on yet. So what happens here, you can try this. Up on the address bar, type in govictorsbakery.com slash uh, ask. I've activated the ask feature of my Tumblr blog. And that's just a very simple kind of contact form. Contact form, which basically lets people ask a question. I can then have the question show up on screen or answer it privately and such. This might be useful again for your business. This could be a way to get people to ask, you know, a question about your product, for example. You should say something like, ask me anything. Mine won't let me do it. I haven't verified my email. It might not let you either. I'm just showing you that if you activate that option, you get a brand new part of your address, and you can allow people to ask a question. For some of you, this might be great. For others, it's not necessary. So that's why it's off by default. And I can change what that text says, and notice I wrote, allow anonymous questions. That might be way too liberal. That'll be way too many people that could ask a question that don't even have a Tumblr account. So if I let people ask a question, but don't turn on anonymous questions, that at least perhaps will protect you from some of the negativity, because they first need a Tumblr account to be able to, to ask the question. Related to that, we've got submissions. Let people submit posts. Send your audience to slash submit to submit posts into your submission queue for approval. So let's say you have a bakery like this, and I put on, on Tumblr, hey everyone, take a selfie with your cupcake and send it to us here. If I turn that on, people will then be able to go to govictorsbakery.tumblr.com slash submit and then a person could upload their selfie. It won't go automatically onto um, my blog until I approve it. And I can write here, send your selfie. Guidelines. Snap a selfie with your fave cupcake. Let's share it with us. You can add tags to the person's post automatically. And you can say, OK, let people post a text, post a photo, a quote, or whatever. Oh, I don't want quote. I don't want video or link. I just want people to send their photo and maybe put text. This is one way that Tumblr might be useful, that WordPress doesn't, doesn't have this feature built in. Having people submit content, you'll have to approve it before it appears. But this is another way to do that 80-20. Uh, have user-generated content, have your followers, have other people suggest stuff to you. Yes, that gets into areas about legality and all of that, but the point is that a lot of what the social media is, especially Tumblr, again, it has a very open interpretation of, of, of copyrights and all of that. So if that's something that might be interesting for you, you can turn it on. You can always turn it off. 
and I turned that on. So if you want to go check it out, I, I don't believe you'll be able to fully use it until you've verified your email, but mine is go, Victor's Bakery, dot tumblr.com slash submit. If it lets you, you can submit something and we'll see what it looks like up here. We have something called the Tumblr queue. This is set as automatically publish a queued post uh, two times a day between 12 noon and 12 noon. So basically throughout the whole day. What this is saying is uh, very similar to what we did with uh, WordPress in that we could schedule posts. So let's say I wrote 500 words, I divided it up into five blog posts, and I set WordPress to automatically publish each of those 100 words once a month on the first day of the month. We have something similar in, Word, in Tumblr in that I can add stuff to my queue and it'll automatically publish two times a day, every day, and time during that day. Perhaps we can shorten it down to uh, once a day between 1 p.m. and uh, 2 p.m. So it's going to choose for me sometime between there whatever's in my queue, the last thing in my queue, uh, it's going to publish it for me between 1 and 2 p.m. So I can add a bunch of pictures, videos, quotes, links, whatever. I can just load up my queue. Ten things, let's say. And my setting here will be that one of those things will be published once a day between that time until it runs out. So I've got stuff for 10 days built in now then. It's not as fine-tuned in this screen as you might think. We can fine-tune it in another screen, however, to say like, well, okay, uh, publish this one today and publish this one next Friday and publish this one next Wednesday. I can fine-tune that, fine that in another screen. This one is just like a constant stream of updates that we can set up. And I would say once a day sometime like that, or else you're going to run out of content faster. So it's really amazing how it says here, well, we can set this all the way up to 50 times a day. 50 posts. Then we can connect your Facebook or your Twitter. So this is how you can post something on Tumblr and it'll then automatically go to Facebook, or it'll automatically go to Twitter. This is how you can save some time and effort if you're going to manage your website and your Tumblr and your Twitter and your Facebook. You can link Tumblr with, with Twitter and Facebook so that when you publish something on Tumblr, it automatically goes to those other two. <clears throat> That's good for beginners, but from a real-world experience, let me tell you about our company. We don't set up any of these auto-postings from Tumblr to the other networks, for example or even from WordPress to the other networks. We do it manually. It does take more time and effort, but we craft a message per platform. Because Twitter, remember, is limited to 150 char 140 characters. So if I'm writing a few characters and pictures and such on Tumblr, and I have that set up automatically, it may not look the best on Twitter. And on Facebook, maybe the kind of people that follow me there wouldn't really be following me on Tumblr anyway. So the kind of maybe edgy stuff I put on Tumblr won't go very won't go over very well on Facebook. So my company we tailor our posts, our content to the platform. You can share the same thing in theory to every platform, but I would then craft it on Twitter to maximum effect 140 characters and a hashtag. I could post the same picture to Facebook, but then rewrite my text a little bit uh, to affect my Facebook audience. And then on my uh, Tumblr and my WordPress, I would think about how to share that same content in a way that is applicable to those networks. For example, what's very popular on Tumblr are animated GIFs. So if I can put a little animation on my, on my post on Tumblr, that'll catch people's attention more on Tumblr than on WordPress. So the big secret, you should make a note, 
GIFs, animated GIFs, are popular on Tumblr. As we explore this, we'll see those examples. That, of course, takes the effort to create an animated GIF. I'll recommend a couple of websites to do that in a moment. But um, what I'm saying is here, you can do this to start off. But later on, like our company, we, we craft the posts. You can post to Tumblr via email, which I think this is a holdover, one of the few holdovers of Web 1.0. Um, there's a Tumblr app for Android, for iPhone, for Windows Phone. There's an app for it. I think an email is not that useful at all. Because if I have my device and I'm going to send an email to that specific address of mine and it shows on Tumblr, it's kind of limited. I would rather use the app where I can write a real Tumblr post. I suppose one way that might, this might be useful is if you've got the Outlook app open on your desktop computer all, all day long, maybe you would use it there. But if I'm on my computer, I'm just going to go to tumblr.com on the browser. So I really don't think there's any point at all for this post by email. I do it either on the website, nicely crafted. I do it on the app. I don't really see a point for the email. The language used in your blog, you can set that. So if you're in writing in Italian, you might want to set to, that to Italian so that it shows up for people that are looking for content in Italian. Wrong time zone here. You might want to set that to the right one. The point of that is that you've got this queue set up here, and it might be posting on the wrong time of the day. allow this blog to appear in search results such as Google, Yahoo, Bing, etc. Sounds like a good idea, so I would leave that on. And if you need to uh, protect this blog to certain audiences, you could do that. And if you say, ah, okay, I, 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 I used Tumblr, it looks fine, uh, not for me, you've got a button right there, delete account. Notice there's also down here, you can block accounts. If they're being harassing or annoying and such, you can block them and then move on. Any question on anything on this screen? So we're still looking at settings. That's in the little uh, generic user icon. This is all edit appearance settings. And then we've got these other settings that we should look at first. Um, if we're, we're under account, let's look at dashboard. So switch over to dashboard. Show notifications. Find out when you have new followers and when your posts have been liked, reblogged, or etc. All of these are on because at the very top right corner you have an icon that will uh, show you activity. I don't. I currently don't have any activity. It's that little lightning bolt. If someone followed my blog, if someone reblogged my stuff, liked my stuff, commented, submitted something to the uh, to the submit screen, asked the question, it would show up under the notifications. The dashboard, uh, well, it's a little house, but in this screen that we're looking at actually is under the, 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 the little user icon there and under edit appearance. So then here under the dashboard, uh, what else can I do? Show real time notifications, enable endless scrolling, show unread message count. So, show real-time notifications. Yeah, I want to know when people comment on my stuff. Endless scrolling is a popular feature of Tumblr in that <clears throat> someone posts something, you go to their profile, you see their stuff, you scroll down, you see more stuff, you scroll some more, you see more stuff. There's never a next button, previous button, it's just an endless scroll. That's the default of Tumblr. If you don't want that, you can turn that off. 
Again, you can see a number of notifications. You can turn that off. All of these I would recommend to leave them on. Then we've got likes. Share posts you like. You have this address, which looks different than the other ones. Tumblr.com slash liked slash by slash the name of your profile. That's going to show the world, if they go to that address, of all of the content that you've liked as your account. There's no positive or negative to that, except that there could be embarrassment here. Because you might be logged in and you might like stuff and not realize, oh, I'm liking stuff in the company profile instead of my personal one. And you never remember. So that those likes could then show up, that the company profile liked, you know, uh, dog food. Why would the company profile like dog food? You like dog food, but not the company profile. So that's on by default. This is up to you. I sort of recommend to turn that off. There's no real big uh, helpfulness about that. It doesn't affect your SEO positively or negatively. I just feel most of us, that's not very useful. Sharing likes. Rich text editor, I would leave that alone. That will allow you to create bold text, underlined text, you know, edit it a little bit. If you want plain or HTML, you can select that, so you can write your own HTML code. And something called Markdown, which is sort of like a more user-friendly HTML. The point of that is that some people are so good on the keyboard that they're just using the keyboard all the time and don't use the mouse very much. With Markdown, you can create bold and italics and all of that with some keyboard combinations. So for most of us, we'll leave it on Rich Text Editor because we'll have a nice little button that says bold, and we can bold it. Any questions on this screen? Let's look at notifications. You might want to look at this one. Um, it says, all notifications and all emails are going to be sent to you. We'll, we'll see that in a moment. And we've got Tumblr news. Email me about trending topics, interesting blogs, and whatever. I don't like that it's so open-ended. What this is saying is, now that you've created a Tumblr account, we'll send you some emails about trending topics, interesting blogs, and whatever. I don't quite like that. So I would recommend turn that off unless you want to see those. They might be helpful. It might be nice to see what the trending topics are, but really, they're probably not going to relate to what you your site is about. These are the trending topics about what everyone is talking about on Tumblr. Uh, interesting blogs again. What does it really know that's interesting to me? I don't think the algorithm is as good is as good as it could be, so I don't think that's very useful. You could leave it on, and after a few emails, then decide to turn it off or not. Let's back up here because it's a little deceptive. All emails. All notifications. Click the pencil. There we go. This is going to send you an email about new followers, new replies, etc., etc. These overall are good. I want to be notified when one of these happens, maybe. Or maybe you want to turn them all off because what you want is to deal with Tumblr in Tumblr. Maybe you don't want your inbox full of all of these Tumblr messages that you have to log into Tumblr anyway to deal with. So you could say notifications to my email from nobody. And now, no, I, now I won't get any emails that I got a new follower. I won't get any email that I got a reblog. Because I'm going to take the time once a day to log into Tumblr myself and see the notifications right there on the lightning bolt. I don't have an opinion either way. This is up to you. Um, you can also put people from you follow. So if you're connected to accounts, you will only get emails from those accounts that you're following. The reason why this might be useful, especially at the beginning, is that then you start to see the activity. You start to see that someone is emailing you. I mean, uh, someone is giving you replies or messages, and then you'll get that email so that you can log in and, and do something. Do something about it, or do something with it.
This is pretty straightforward here. Any questions on this um, screen? We don't really need to do anything under the apps screen. This is telling you that if you downloaded the iPhone version or the Windows version or whatever, it's going to be listed here. Um, it's going to be listed here, the connection. Uh, the only real use for this screen is like, let's say you had Tumblr set up on your phone and your phone was lost. Uh, you don't want people to be able to log into your Tumblr account from your lost phone. So you can go to this screen and disconnect the phone. So for us, there's nothing really here, but this is where you would manage the connection between your Tumblr device, your Tumblr and your devices. Let's go back here to click on blogs. Click on the blog that you've got set up. And now before our, our break, we'll take a look at some customization options because again, my blog still looks like the generic brand new Tumblr, right out of the box Tumblr account. The way that you edit the appearance is you've got a button, Edit Appearance. You can select then to put a new picture in the back. You can put a picture avatar. You can turn it off altogether. You probably don't want the name of this blog to be untitled. So you can click to edit that, and I'll call it Victor's Bakery. And notice my Tumblr blog address is going to be govictorsbakery.tumblr.com, but I can put the name right up here exactly what I wanted Victor's Bakery. Description. You don't want a description, you can turn that off. I forgot to say, uh, so when you're typing the when you're typing your name here, you have different colors for it. You 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 have um, some customization with some fonts. Once you've made some of those changes, then you can save it. And the last thing I'll leave you with, then we'll take a break as well. You've customized it a bit, but then you've also got here website theme, edit theme, and then that will, uh, well, you need to verify your email. Then that will let you uh, pick a bunch of interesting looking themes. So let's take our break at this point. You can take a break. You can further customize your, 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 your Tumblr a little bit. I would suggest that you do customize it, especially if you're going to use it for real, because no one wants to follow the generic accounts. Yes. I have a question about the email. Mm -hmm. Like I signed up here with an email address that is kind of my basic email, but it's not an email that I'm ultimately going to 
that? Yeah, that should be changeable somewhere. Oh, it's on top here, the essentials account. So if you don't want that email anymore, go up there and change that. And then maybe also turn off, let people find your blog through this address. Okay, thank you. So that's under the, uh, the settings account. All right, so let's take a break. We'll be back in 10 minutes, 7.15. Customize your, your site a little bit here, and then we'll go on.